I'm on my knees. I'm on my knees, Paul. It's your boy Crypto Blood. Welcome to another episode of my two Satoshis. And shout out to one of my YouTube members, John P, for the song request. Keb Mo, Government Cheese. Thanks for the song request, brother John P. What's good, people? Hope you guys are doing well today and happy Friday. Welcome to another episode. Let me take these frames off. Today, we are going to be looking at three reasons why CoinGate says that DeFi may have reached its peak. I mean, if you look at some of these valuations on some of these coins, you may feel that way. And we'll look into that and see what they brought up. I haven't even looked at the article, so I don't know. But I thought that was a pretty interesting read for us to go over today out of CoinGate again. And also, Uniswap trading at seven dollars and 28 cents did you sell too early did i sell too early i'm gonna explain why i don't think i have and uh maybe i'll look like a fool in a couple of days or maybe i'll look like a genius we'll talk about all of that it is on a tear it's up five percent in the last hour up 98 percent in the last 24 hours i touched on it yesterday in regards to the token float and a little bit more in the tokenomics of the whole thing and I'll explain a little bit further today why I personally don't think I sold too late or too early, I should say. You you never can pick the top, right? If you have an extra strategy, stick to it, whatever that price is. If it's at $8, it touched $8 earlier. If it was at $8, sell at $8. Just sell at least something of your tokens so you can realize some of those gains and maybe migrate them over to other things. That's what I did. I'll go over that again today as well. And this one out of CNBC Trump blocks downloads of TikTok and WeChat on this coming Sunday, I believe. This is epic. I can't believe Trump has done this. And this is the type of stuff I like to see. I'm sorry. I know people don't like Trump. He's polarizing. He didn't do well with, you know, handling this pandemic and whatnot. But man, can you see any other president making a boss move like this? I don't, but we'll take a look at this and I'll kind of show you and relate this to the crypto world. You know, we can have that discussion on whether or not there's a resilience in the crypto space from actions like this. Can the president stop uh, one of these big crypto exchanges or dApps or whatnot? We can have that discussion as well. And I'll give you my two Satoshis on that. But all three articles or topics on today's episode of my two Satoshis coming up right now. But before we start, if you guys find these types of videos informative, make sure you like, share, and subscribe, and click that bell to receive more videos like this. And if you have a friend or family member looking to get into the crypto space and learn a little bit about what's going on, I think this is a great tool, a great website, CryptoUniversity.us. Check it out. I have a link in the description below. You can save a big chunk off of the Bitcoin Basics course. It's $30 right now, lifetime deal, and you also get access to their Telegram and Discord room, I believe. So check that out, CryptoUniversity.us. And I want to take a quick look at what we have going on on the heat map today. Bitcoin is slightly down a quarter of a percent, trading at 10906 bucks. Ethereum down 2.67% at $381.65. But look at the deep red ones today. We've got Tezos down pretty heavily. 5.6% Algorand down heavily today. Link down even more today. 6.6% trading at the $10 handle. I know some people were talking about $8 was a good buy in. Well, maybe they're looking about right on that call. Very close to $8. OMG down as well. But overall, if we take a look at the grand scheme of things, a lot of the altcoins are down today, with the exception of the Uniswap being up greatly. That's kind of the main topic for today's episode, and we'll talk about that shortly. But I got to give you the scribble scrabble on Bitcoin and the technicals going on. So we did break this steep trend line, which I thought we would. That's a pretty steep angle. So we kind of went up, bounced off of it and came back down. And now we're trying to attempt another a leg up toward this trend line. I think this time we'll probably get rejected and form a new trend line, maybe pivoting out from here. So we may see a pullback, I think, to at least 10,500, 600 range and then head higher for ultimately the big test for us again i always reiterate is this trend line here if i zoom out this line right here is the ultimate test all right and so at this point if i kind of look outward maybe on the 24th ish that would place us at around 11,400 for this test 
of this downward trend line. Not feeling too good about us breaking out of that right away. I think we may take one more leg down, maybe to 10,500 again, and we'll maybe break out of this downward trend line around here. That's where I think we'll break out and head higher to test that 12,388 level. So two of the articles today are coming out of CoinGate right now. And this one is did Uniswap rush Uni token launch in response to SushiSwap. Uh, they definitely rushed it. Was it a good rush or not? Time will tell. I'll tell you that much. But it definitely garnered a lot of attention and garnered a lot of capital, including mine. I mean, I went over there and staked some money and started mining Uniswap tokens. But what I want to show you is that as far as total value locked in USDT, the protocol denominated the first position as it jumped all the way to 1.4 billion. In addition to that, with respect to Ether and Bitcoin locked in, Uniswap was ranked at second and fifth position with 1.8 million and 12.8 thousand Bitcoin respectively. Besides DAI, locked in Uniswap also surged to a fresh all time high of 110 million. And this is from DeFi Pulse, guys. As you can see right now, we did knock off about 200 million from that total value lock, currently sitting at 1.64 billion. But look at SushiSwap at number 10. Oh, how the tides have switched. It's crazy how SushiSwap was just on top and now not even top 10 or just barely top 10. They currently have a half a billion in total value lock. So it's not a small fish in the pool or pond at all by, by a long shot. Sushi Swap should still garner some attention and respect, but I'm just showing you that with the launch of that token, Uniswap has just catapulted to number one in over 24 hours, which is insane. And so the founder of the most famous DeFi protocol, Yearn Finance, echoed a similar sentiment on Twitter regarding the Uni launch. He said, kind of meh about Uni launch. The launch itself is perfect, surprise launch and retrospective, exactly what should be done nowadays. But I can't help but feel that the launch was simply in response to Sushi. He says, never let other people set the pace for you. Move at your own pace. I couldn't agree more. And he goes on to say, traditionally, I have found that Uniswap team to have a much longer play. They just recently closed their funding and I wasn't expecting a token until after the V3 launch. Why hype up V3 but launch a token with V2? My data showed Uni should be coming with their token after V3. Hey, that's a pretty good assessment of what's going on with the Uni team and them uh, kind of rushing in. I think they did as well. doesn't mean it won't be successful. It absolutely will. But my major concern right now, and you know, maybe it's premature, maybe this is already in the pipeline, but I don't see a full demand or a need for the token other than voting. And guess what? There's nothing to vote for. <laughs> There's nothing to vote for with the Uniswap tokens. Now, I'm sure there will be a big use case for voting soon with this DEX, but as of right now, you see the price of Uni going higher, and if you haven't sold yet, you should consider what is the real reason for you to hold on to these tokens. We're starting to hit the upper bound in regards to the market cap of this particular token right now. With it trading at $7.22, we've got a market cap of 716 million dollars nearly three-fourths of a billion dollars is that worthy of that type of valuation right now now we have over 100 million tokens in circulation and that's going to continue to rise fairly quickly because of course this pool is now open so people are staking their eth die or eth usdt and eth usdc's to create new uniswap tokens so that causes inflation on the token supply is being added at a rapid pace and some people like to actually take a valuation of max supply but i won't go that far because that will put this token at seven billion dollars uh that's not a realistic and a or proper way to assess this particular token at this moment you got to remember that the one billion in token circulation is done over four years so we're talking about a quarter every year it looks like somewhere around there so you know don't i wouldn't take that assessment on it i wouldn't value it based on the total max supply right now though that will add some selling pressure to the token in the future right we got to keep that in, in mind but i do expect the overall DeFi market in the next five years to be in the hundreds of billions of dollars so for uniswap to hold a valuation of seven billion you know in four years uh, i think it can even be higher than that at that point but what i'm saying is you have to keep your expectations in check when, you, when you're talking about the price of this token can it be 
a ten dollar token absolutely not too far away from that still think it's over is to be well overvalued at, at that point but yeah we can see ten dollars we can see even in some mania capitulation move to the upside a fifteen dollar thirteen dollar a price uniswap for sure but trying to compare this to wi-fi where you think you're going to get it in at, at these prices and hold it and hodl all the way to uh, twenty thousand dollar tokens that is not going to happen a thousand dollar token is not going to happen that is not even in the remote possibility ram okay so just that's what i just want to do make sure you guys keep that in in mind now that you know where you could see maybe an upper bound on this price uh, for uniswap that can help you assess where you should start taking a little off the table for yourself and then and actually allocating some of those gains into other uh, tokens or other pools where you can start earning revenue. The yield is where the magic is, to be honest with you. So with that being said, let's take a look at this other CoinGate article asking, is DeFi at a peak? They've given three reasons. The first reason is too difficult to use. That's not a peak issue to me. That's an early adoption issue. But it goes on to say here that uh, this Theta Seek Bitcoin trader listed his top three reasons. DeFi is too difficult to use while traction for DeFi and AMM plus deposit yields has grown tremendously over the past few months. DeFi is difficult to use. The ability to lose funds scares most new users away. Again, I don't think that's an actual uh, peak type of uh, symptom, right? That's an early adoption symptom. The next thing he says is that little new money entering the space. Moving on from the hard to use narrative, the analysts added that most people using DeFi are already users, indicating that they are using their crypto holdings and little new capital is entering the scene. A massive surge in stablecoin circulation could be evidence to this as crypto gets converted into stablecoins to use for liquidity farming. He goes on to say, other than ETH, USDC is one of the most used stablecoins in the space. The market cap of USDC increased by 800 million, quote unquote, new money in the past month, while DeFi market cap inflates by more than 3 billion in the same period. And then the last point they make as to why DeFi has hit a peak was that diminishing returns and yield jumping. He says yield farmers called degens in the crypto speak referring to degenerates will rapidly flock to the latest hot DeFi food meme then jump ship onto the next one as soon as returns diminish. This can be seen with the likes of SushiSwap, its token printing and the resulting pump and dump and Yearn Finance's YETH vault which started off returning 90% and now only yields a paltry 2%. Compound Finance is another example as liquidity jumps from one pool to another, sliding down the TVL chart from top 10 to not mention at all and resulting in limited loyalty to DeFi protocols. That is a problem. Limited loyalty. There isn't any. Uh, the DeFi world almost seems like and feels like the workplace uh, <laughs> environment. There's no loyalty anymore. People don't stay at jobs for 30 years. People don't stay in DeFi pools for more than 30 minutes. So <laughs> I understand that part. I can agree with that, but I wouldn't say that the DeFi peak is in. I'm sorry. There is a lot more money we can suck from your traditional coins and, and uh, from Bitcoin to Litecoin, any of these other coins. There's so much more money that's pent up and wait till those other crypto users find out more about DeFi and yielding and getting some return on their investment. I think we got a long way to go before a peak. And by the time I think a peak or a saturation hits within the space, we may see outside money finally start coming in. So that may save us once again from hitting a peak. So that's kind of my take on it. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Are we at a peak in DeFi at this moment? Let me know in the comments below. And then let's take a look at this last one. This is not necessarily crypto related, but I definitely wanted to cover it in today's video. Trump to block downloads of TikTok and WeChat on Sunday. <laughs> Oh man, the Commerce Department announced it will ban U.S. business transactions with China-owned social app WeChat and TikTok on Sunday. The announcement sets up two different time frames for WeChat and TikTok with a full ban on WeChat going into effect on Sunday along with a ban on updates and maintenance to the TikTok app. So this is interesting to me because I don't know if you guys know, Oracle, the company Oracle, actually I think went into and signed a deal with TikTok to oversee its US operations. They didn't do a acquisition of TikTok. I think they just did some partnership type thing. So how does that play into this whole president banning TikTok and Oracle, I thought doing a partnership with TikTok, I have no clue. 
Microsoft lost out to that bid to Oracle. They were trying to take over TikTok. That didn't happen. But this is interesting to see. TikTok, it says, has a November 12th deadline before companies are banned from providing cloud and internet services for the app, which could give Oracle more time to hammer out its offer for TikTok to satisfy President Trump. Okay, that, that, that makes more sense. So TikTok has until November 16th, it looks like, or 12th. And then uh, it's no love for WeChat. They out of there. <laughs> How do you guys feel about this? Is this a watershed moment? I don't think this has ever been done before. This is a watershed moment in my book. What do you think will come after this? What type of moves will governments make and ban different uh, apps and stuff for security reasons? And I don't blame them. I think, you know, we have to start sending China a message. And that message is we're not just going to allow you to just come over into our country Chinese citizens already can come here tax free, buy property tax free, buy and sell stocks tax free, no capital gains on their stocks, uh, no no uh, capital gains on real estate inv investments or anything like that. So they're just sucking everything from us and taking it back home. What do we get from it? Absolutely nothing. So I'm not, I'm, I'm with it. I told you guys actually the other day, it's ironic that we're talking about this. The next war with China isn't a kinetic war. It's not missiles and bombs and no. It's going to be a cyber war and this is literally kind of the first strike. We'll see what happens, how China counters, countersuits this, or what, what happens. But this is crazy. I can't believe that Mr. Trump, orange man, actually is banning WeChat and TikTok. I don't think TikTok is actually going to get banned. I think Oracle is going to work out a plan to satisfy Mr. Trump's quest, but we'll have to see what happens. I don't know, guys. Let me know in the comments below. What do you think about this? Well, I'll probably talk about this over the weekend on the next Off the Chain episode. I'll have a special guest coming in this Sunday as well. That is at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, but that's pretty much it for today, ladies and gents. Shout out again to my man, John P., for the song request, Keb Mo, Government Cheese. If you found this video informative, make sure you guys like, share, and subscribe. And click that bell to receive more videos like this. I'm out of here. Ha!